This is the second video for section 3.5 on error correcting codes. In this lecture, I'll be talking about Hamming distance. So last time we talked about binary messages, which are strings of zeros and ones, and we wanted to try to detect and maybe even correct errors in transmissions. And to do that, we added something called a parity checksum to the end of each message. So what a parity checksum is, is we add up some or all of the digits in our message, and then the check digit is zero if that sum is even, and one if that sum is odd. In the example we worked on, we had four digit messages, and then the checksum was the parity checksum of the first four digits. So in these examples, these first four digits, that's the actual, actual message, and this fifth digit, that's a check digit. So a code word is the full message that includes any check digits. So we might say that we're going to send this message 00100. And we can detect that there's an error because if we look here in our dictionary, the list of all valid code words, 00100 is not on that list. So we know something's wrong. We know that er that message has an error in it. But how could we correct that error? How would we be able to tell maybe what the original intended message was supposed to be? To do that, we're going to use a concept called Hamming distance. So the Hamming distance, or sometimes we'll just say the word distance, between two binary messages is the number of digits in which they differ. So for example, if we have these two messages, 01101 and 10111, the distance between those messages is 3. And the easiest way to see that is to line up the two messages on top of each other. So there's my first message, 01101, and my second message, 10111. And what I'm looking for is how many digits do these messages differ in? Well, they differ in the first digit, they differ in the second digit, they're the same for the third digit, they differ in the fourth digit, but they're the same for the fifth digit. So the number of digits in which they differ is three. So the distance between these two messages is 3. So to use this distance concept to try to correct errors, what we're going to do is we're going to compare the message that we received to every message, every code word in our dictionary. And we're going to try to find the one that's closest in terms of distance, in terms of the smallest distance, the one in our dictionary that's closest to the message that we received. And that will be the message that we think we probably were supposed to have gotten. So let's try this. So here we have our dictionary again. So remember, these are the code words that we came up with in the, in the previous lecture. So we receive the message 00100. We're going to compare that message to every code word in our dictionary. So we're just going to go through and say, okay, I'm going to line up these two messages, 00100. I look and I see one digit in which those messages differ. So the distance here is one. And then I'm going to line up to the next message, 00100. Again, I'm going to look for how many digits do these differ. They differ in here, in the third digit, and the fifth digit. So the distance here would be 3. Let me do one more for you. So let's do 00100. Again, how many digits do these differ? It looks like they differ in the first digit, the third digit, and the fifth digit. So the distance there would again be 3. So I'm going to keep doing that for every single word in my dictionary. So this is the result of comparing our received message to every word in our dictionary, every code word in our dictionary. And unfortunately, what we see here is that we have a five-way tie. There are five messages that are all one digit away from the message that we received. So unfortunately, this is, means that we're not going to be able to correct the error in our message because we don't know which of these five code words was the one that was actually sent, was the intended message, because there's no way of telling the difference between these five messages, because they're all exactly one away. So what went wrong? Why didn't we get uh, the ability to correct this error? So the real issue here is that if we look closely at our list of code words, we see that some of our code words are exactly two digits away from each other. So for example, 01001 and 01100, both of those are in our dictionary. And the distance between these two code words is 2. Why does that matter? Well, distance 2 matters because that means that if we have an error in one digit, that's going to take us one digit away from the intended message, from the valid word. But that means that we're now one away from the intended message and one away from some other message potentially. 
and then we have this tie, right? Remember the tie was the thing that was keeping us from being able to decode our message. So in this whole diagram here, this here, that's a valid code word. That's in our dictionary. This over here, that's also a valid code word. But this thing in the middle, that's the message we received. And so there's no way of knowing which one of those valid code words, because they're both exactly one away, there's no way of knowing which one of those valid code words is actually the one that we were supposed to get. So the solution here would be to try to create a dictionary of code words where the minimum distance between any two code words is three, because then that would mean that any single error would be corrected. So if you change one digit of valid code word, now you are one distance away from that word, but you're still at least two away from anything else because the minimum distance between any two words in your dictionary is three. So if the distance between any two points is three and you walk one space away, well, you're one space away from where you started and you're still at least two spaces away from anything else. So that would allow us to actually correct our messages because we would never be able to get a tie of one. All right, so how do we accomplish that? How do we make a dictionary where the minimum distance between two code words is three? Well, we're going to need more check digits, right? We're going to need more of these checksum digits. One checksum digit at the end of our message, which is what we have been using, is just not enough. So in order to help us understand how these additional checksums are going to work, I'm going to give names to the digits of our message. I'm going to call them M1, M2, M3 and M4. So M for message, and then one, two, three, and four to number the digits. Okay, so here's one way to do this. this is not the only way to create these uh, distance three dictionaries, but here's one way that we'll accomplish this. So we're gonna have three checksums, which I'll call C1, C2, and C3. So C1 is gonna be the parity of M1 plus M2 plus M3. C2 is gonna be the parity of M1 plus M3 plus M4. And then C3 is going to be the parity of M2, M3, M4. This might seem like gobbledygook, but we'll make this make sense for you. So if our message is 0, 1, 1, 1, what does that mean? That means our four digits are M1 is 0, M2 is 1, M3 is 1, and M4 is 1. So my first check digit, that's the parity of M1 plus M2 plus M3. In other words, the first digit and the second digit and the third digit all added together. That's 0 plus 1 plus 1. That's two, which is even. So my first check digit is zero. Remember, for a parity checksum, even gives you a zero, odd gives you a one. For C2, the parity of M1 plus M3 plus M4, that just means first digit plus the third digit plus the fourth digit. That's gonna be zero plus one plus one. That's also two, that's also even, which means my second check digit is also zero. And then finally, my third check digit, that's the parity of the sum of the second, third, and fourth digits. So that's one plus one plus one. That's three, three is odd. So my third check digit is one. So my message was zero, one, 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 right? That's the, you know, lift up the robot arm or, you know, take a picture, right? That's the instructions. The code word is that message, zero, one, 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 with these check digits added to the end, zero, zero, one. So this is what goes into our dictionary. So we just do that for each of our four digit messages, which gives us 16 seven digit code words. And again, these first four digits, that's the message. That's the actual information you wanna send. And now we have three check digits at the end of our messages. And now it's a little tedious, it's actually very tedious, but we can check and go through and check every pair of messages, the, uh, every pair of code words, I should say. The minimum distance between any two of these code words is three. This will accomplish the thing that we were trying to do before. So now that means that since the minimum distance between any two code words is three, we can actually detect any two digit errors, right? Because if we have two mistakes, two digits that are wrong, will still be at least one away from any other valid message because the minimum distance is three. Again, if you're standing at a spot and everything's at least three spaces away and you walk two spaces away, you're still not at another code word. So that means that we'll be able to detect that that message is not valid because it can't be in our dictionary. And having a minimum distance of three will also let us, as we've talked about before, correct any one single digit error. 
In general, if we had added even more check digits to our message, any even more parity checksums, so that the minimum distance between any two of our code words was some number D here, then what that will do is allow us to detect that many errors minus one errors, and then it will let us correct half of that many errors, D minus one divided by two. So detecting, we can detect a whole bunch of errors, and then we'll be able to correct at, at most half of that many errors. So for example, if we had created a code where the minimum distance between any two code words was five, so D equals five here for those formulas, then we would be able to detect any four errors. D minus one is five minus one, that's four. And correct any two errors because D minus one divided by two, that would be five minus one divided by two, that's four divided by two, which is two. So the more spaced apart the messages in our dictionary are, the more errors we can detect and correct. So to wrap things up, our lives are governed by data. We're sending messages all the time back and forth, receiving messages, and transmission errors occur all the time. So many methods, in addition to the ones that we've talked about in this section, have been developed to detect and correct those errors. And moving forward in the next couple of sections, we're gonna be talking about the other concern that we have when we send data back and forth, which is the idea of security. Right? We don't want somebody reading our messages who we didn't intend to read our messages. Right, So we want to try to figure out how can we prevent some stranger from reading and intercepting our messages. We'll talk about that next time.